the Pontiac Fiero. One of the most unique automobiles to ever be produced by an American manufacturer. Originally conceived as a simple commuter car, Fiero evolved into something far better than GM had anticipated. The sleek styling, mid-engine layout, and composite body panels all made Fiero otherworldly in comparison to contemporary offerings. For the first time since the 1960s, Pontiac was the birthplace of something truly exciting. Pontiac was actually one of the few brands to weather the tumultuous 70s relatively unscathed. And something truly special was on the horizon. Mothership GM had spent most of the 70s substituting performance and power with ever-increasing levels of luxury and weight. But even GM realized change would be necessary and started downsizing as the 80s neared. The directive was to create a two-seater commuter car with maximum style and fuel efficiency. Early designs clearly took inspiration from Fiat and other European manufacturers. The emphasis was on classic, timeless lines and seemed a world away from contemporary offerings at the time. There were also advanced design concepts for future and more powerful models that were produced by the designers who already saw the P-Car project, as it was known early on, to be something truly special. From the start, the Fiero interior was aircraft cockpit inspired with a focus on maximum space efficiency. In stark contrast to the American automotive aesthetic of the 70s, there was an emphasis on trimmed down wedge-shaped styling. Early names considered for the Fiero included Sprint, Fiamma, P3000, and Pegasus. The word Fiero is Italian in origin and translates to proud. And just as many GM offerings of the 70s provided great pride of ownership by the linear foot, Pontiac hoped the Fiero would inspire similar sentiment in a greatly downsized form. The concept was to create something timeless and intimate a car that would provide both great economy and sporting performance. Fiero was truly a unique concept for GM, and a radical departure from the typical lumbering 20-foot-long behemoths of the 70s. Indeed, for better or worse, the upcoming decade would prove radically different in many ways. Pontiac offerings of the early to mid-80s consisted of full-sized, wood-cladded wagons, variations of GM's economy-oriented J-Car platform, and an odd mixture of leftover 70s designs with mid-80s components and detailing. The excitement division had clearly fallen victim to the era of badge engineering. There was even a Pontiac-badged full-size offering christened Parisian, and identical to Chevy Caprice in all but badging and grill trim. Mid-sized Pontiac offerings of this time, such as the Grand Prix in Bonneville, were entirely unrecognizable from their past iterations. And then there was the Pontiac-badged version of the Chevy Chevette, the Pontiac 1000, of which even MotorWeek could find little positive to say. Oversight of the Fiero project was led by Hulky Alcacci. 
Honky was a true car enthusiast and he insisted on zero compromise and a clean sheet design. The Fiero would be driver focused and unlike anything America had ever produced. Ernie Schaefer was assigned as Fiero plant manager and he was a true people person interested in unifying and empowering employees to create the most innovative product in GM's history. The Fiero project represented a rare time in which individuals and the passion they possessed played a real part in the creation of something truly special. Fiero was the first automobile to make use of GM's new wind tunnel test facility, and every effort was made to develop a design featuring both maximum efficiency and curb appeal. Special consideration was also given to the flow of air for the mid-engine design, which is inherently more difficult to cool. Employees were tasked with hand-building early prototypes, which is not unusual. What was unusual was the level of attention paid to their feedback and insight. It was a rare time when those who crafted an automobile had real say in how to make it better. The former Grand Prix plant was transformed into the new Fiero production facility. It was a time of celebration as formerly laid off workers were welcomed back to help construct a truly revolutionary new car. Development of the so-called P-Car evolved rapidly from its inception in 1979 and by 1984 Fiero would arrive just in time to help ignite a Pontiac performance renaissance. Officially dubbed Fiero 2M4 for two-seat mid-engine four-cylinder, Effort was made to present this new concept as a truly sporty and economical offering that could be found nowhere else. Initial offerings consisted of Fiero Sport Coupe and Fiero SE Coupe, which featured upgraded wheels and a standard rear luggage rack. Body panels consisted of several types of plastic, ranging from fiberglass impregnated plastic on the upper panels to reinforced flexible urethane on lower panels, which prevented parking lot dents and dings. The 2.5-liter 4 featured a new swirl port intake system and multi-port fuel injection for maximum efficiency and reliability. The mid-engine layout left a surprising amount of interior room up front, and even taller drivers found accommodations relatively pleasant. Storage space both up front and rear, as well as a variety of comfort and convenience options, furthered the inherent practicality and value of Fiero. Automotive journalists of the time praised the Fiero for its true sports car-like handling, an excellent fit and finish that was a result of Fiero's mill and drill system, which ensured body panel attachments at precisely the same point every time. And of course, there was the simple concept of separate sets of wheels for steering and powering the car, a layout the European thoroughbreds had discovered and perfected years ago, and one that made the Fiero something truly exciting.
Fiero was good from the start, and quickly evolving into something truly special. For 1985, Fiero received GM's 2.8 liter V6. A new GT model was offered standard with the V6. It also featured a sleek aero front end and lower body cladding. The standard model also received a considerable number of refinements, including revised valve lifters and a standard 5-speed manual transmission. Four-wheel disc brakes and fully independent suspension continued to ensure unexpected levels of performance. Other advanced features included available stereo speakers in each headrest, as well as an improved cruise control module and other interior refinements. As cheesy as the 80s could be, we must take pause to admire in childlike wonder the era of pop-up headlights and space pod styling. The combination of a V6 and a lightweight mid-engine design expanded the appeal of this most special of automotive offerings. Fiero was no longer a simple, sporty-looking economy offering, but something inspirational, yet reasonably priced. An unusually well-thought-out interior, by GM standards, furthered the appeal. Indeed, it seemed Fiero had met and surpassed all objectives, assumingly assuring itself a long life of faithful service. Rapid and continuous refinement of Fiero increased confidence even more. It seemed at long last the legendary ancestors of Pontiac's storied past had been reawakened. Driver focused enhancements would continue, including a WS6 performance package with revised suspension components and 15 inch wheels. Interior detailing would continue to evolve and improve in every way. Lower and midline offerings would receive enhancements as well, and become steadily more competitive with new competition from foreign rivals. Design flaws causing engine fires and other mid-engine related maladies were addressed in uncharacteristically quick fashion. Fiero had quickly evolved into something that could compete with the best the world had to offer, maybe even GM's own Corvette. And with that, the Fiero would suddenly vanish an event many considered the beginning of the end of the legendary brand that gifted us this truly special automotive icon.